Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to discuss the basics of bones. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple free bone character from scratch. And we're going to talk about how you can manipulate those bones, add and insert and remove different bones and all that sort of fun stuff. So to get started we're going to go over here to the left hand side in our menu and select create G3 free bone actor. And once we do that, I need to select an image right there, uh, the scarecrow you can see on the screen. Now we recommend you use a PNG, transparent PNG image for your characters. Um, highest resolution as possible, normally around 2000 by 2000 would do the trick. All right, and you can see when our character appears on the screen, uh, we have no bones on it yet, but we have this bone editor that pops up and it says there's an add bone option that's highlighted at the top there. So we can actually just click anywhere on our character. Now I'm going to click on the bottom, and that's where I'm going to start the bone root. So when you first click on your character, make sure it's you know somewhere near the bottom in this case. Uh, each character is different, obviously. But for this one, I'm going to click at the bottom here, and make sure that you're clicking on the actual image. That's very important as well. So I'm going to click here, and you can see I have another uh, option to add another bone node. I'm just going to keep on going. With uh, my left click, I'm going to click over here, and then we're going to click somewhere in the belly button area. And then uh, we'll do the lower chest, and we're kind of kind of curve the uh, bone curvature to the right here a little bit because our character is a little bit lopsided, and we'll just add another bone at the top there. And if you want to stop adding bones, you can press the escape key or just right-click your mouse button. All right, so there we have it. We have a bone structure right off the bat. Now, if you want to preview that, just go over here and press the preview button, and you can click on any one of your character's bones and you know move it around. And you can see we already have a flexible stretchy scarecrow character okay with a pumpkin on his head now when you select different bones you're going to get different results when you do this uh, you can see this one kind of bends the uh, lower area a little bit more but that's basically previewing so now we have a character that has a uh, you know a basic spine going from the bottom to the top here what if we want to add additional bones for the character's arms because we want to manipulate the character's arms so we could say hi or something like that well then let's go ahead and just add add some more bones so i'm going to go and select add bone again now you can see we have a uh, a little um, cursor that pops up with this plus on the on the on it right here, and if I hover over different uh, bones, they'll turn green just like this. So I'm going to add a couple of arms from the uh, chest bone right here. Okay, so I'm going to click on this node right here. And you can see we now have the option to extend a bone this way. So I'm going to click over here, click over by kind of midway through the arm there, and on the end of the sleeve, and then another one on the end of the fingers right there. And then I'll go ahead and right click that. So you can see that I added another bone hierarchy. And you can see the bone hierarchy in the right hand side here. So bone four is the basic, uh, the, the chest base right here, the parent bone. And bone five is the one for the head. And bone seven comes off that bone and forms the arm. All right. So we can do that again. Or what we can do here is we can just select bone seven. And I can also mirror it as well. So I can mirror it to the other side to create another arm. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And it'll give you the option to mirror horizontal or vertical. In this case, we're going to use horizontal and we'll create an additional arm. So let's go ahead and place this one in place just by left clicking and dragging. We'll put it in a similar position to the other one. And you can click down here to uh, uh, click on your hierarchy as well to select the different bones. Now, um, I'm going to click and drag this one to the end of the arm there. It's a little bit longer, this arm. You can see that. And if I uh, click on the end here, we'll actually click the bone over here and that'll allow us to drag it to the bottom here. All right, so we have another uh, arm. I'm going to preview this. You can see if I preview it, we can just kind of, whoop, there's the uh, tip of the uh, tip bone kind of moving around. This one is, will control the entire uh, lower arm, I guess. If he has a lower arm, you can see it going on like that. Now we can also modify this one, and this is kind of like the shoulder area. You can see this one's modifying the face. We'll talk about, uh, you know, stretching and all that stuff in, uh, in another tutorial on masking. And there's also pinning, which we'll talk about in this tutorial a little bit later on. Okay, so you can kind of just, you know, drag your character to whatever pose you want. You have him saying hi, just like this. And that's kind of just adding uh, additional bones from a current hierarchy. Let's just stop the preview there. Now there's one more cool option, and that is the ability to duplicate. So say we wanted to turn the scarecrow into an octopus a scarecrow or a four-legged scarecrow for some reason, we can just take the arm and we can duplicate that arm as well. We just press duplicate on that hierarchy. It'll create another duplicate arm just like this. And we can create another one on the other side as well if we want and have all sorts of fun with that. But that's just duplicated. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now, if you want to remove an entire hierarchy, 
Uh, we see we want to remove uh, bone 7, 8, and 9 with one parentheses there. And we can just go ahead and select remove. And that's going to remove the entire hierarchy. We'll talk about the difference between remove and reduce a little bit later on. Um, you can see if I select this middle bone, for example, bone 3, and I select remove, that's going to remove basically everything after my second bone node right here. You can see the reduced hierarchy on the right-hand side there. So I'm going to control Z and undo that. So you got to be careful when you're using the remove option. All right, well, let's take a look at um, pinning stuff now, okay? So we're going to basically be talking about pinning mesh. If I select my right arm, for example, uh, whoops, let's go ahead and control Z and preview that before we move it. Uh, if I select my right arm, notice when I move it, actually, let's choose the uh, one over here. When I move this, you can see that we're actually kind of moving the lower uh, part of the character's torso, which we wouldn't really want to do in most cases. It seems like it's almost like an ocean or something like that. Um, and the head, which we'll talk about in a separate tutorial uh, with a different method. You can see, say we don't want this, this part on the bottom to move, for example. We want it to kind of stay stationary because the shoulder movement shouldn't really be affecting it um, for the most part. So what you can do is you can actually go ahead and select Add Pin. Okay, uh, Add Pin will allow you to pin your mesh to a certain bone. So say, for example, we wanted to pin the lower part of the torso to this midsection bone right here. Well, we can do that when we select Add Pin. If we hover over it, you can see our cursor turns into a little uh, eye drop tool right there. So I'm just going to click that. And now we have the option to add a pin. You can see the cursor changes to a little pin thing. All right. So I'm going to click down here. I'm going to add a few pins. I'm going to click on our mesh right here on all four sides just like that and then I'll right click to stop adding pins and then you can you know click and add or drag pins to move them around later on as well okay but all these pins are now connected to this uh, center you can see the hierarchy right there pin group of bone all right so what happens now is if I take my shoulder oops again we need to preview first if I take my shoulder and I move it around notice now that the there is very minimal if any movement at the bottom part of the torso right there because it's pinned to this bone and it's not following the movement of this upper bone. So that may be something that you want to consider for uh, certain uh, certain scenarios. Uh, and you can see the result on this side as well. All right, well, let's talk about modifying the bones that we already have. In this section, we're going to talk about bone connecting, uh, reduction, and insert. All right, so let's go ahead first and talk about bone connection. So say right now, for example, we have bone seven. It's currently connected to bone uh, four which is the, the parent of bone seven right here on the hierarchy. Say for example, we wanted to connect bone seven to you know this one down here, which is bone three instead of bone four. Well, that's pretty easy to do. All we need to do is select bone seven right here, and then we can go ahead and select connect and choose that other bone node right here. So I'm gonna click that. There we go, and it, it'll connect to uh, bone three right there, and it's no longer connected to bone four. All right, so it'll have a slightly different hierarchy and different uh, mesh movement as a result. Let's do the same thing for the other side right here. So this arm right here, bone seven with zero in parentheses, and let's connect that to the midsection there as well. And you can see now we have this different type of bone hierarchy. Let's preview this and take a look at the result right here. So, you know, it's uh, fairly, Really accurate, uh, not too much difference from what we previously had, but a little bit less shoulder movement. All right, and uh, this one right here. So it's taking mo a lot of its movement cues from this uh, base down here. And if we take the base, we can, you know, move it from side to side and, uh, you know, do all this fun stuff as well. All right, so that's how you can like reconnect bones to each other. Let's talk about reduction and insertion as well. Okay, so see, for example, this bottom part right here we wanted to uh, insert a couple bones. Um, if I take this bone node, for example, and I, oops, let's control Z that, and I preview it, uh, you can see, yeah, it looks, you know, we can bend the base a little bit, but say we wanted more bones to, be, to bend it in a more detailed uh, fashion. Well, in that case, we can add some bones there. So let's go ahead and hold Alt and both mouse buttons and zoom in. Uh, click and drag with both mouse buttons and zoom in on the base here. Okay, now notice the the base, uh, the root node right here, bone 01, it doesn't give us the option to insert or reduce. However, if we select option 2, we now have the option to insert and reduce. But notice that we want to have more bones, uh, more bone nodes, which are these little circles at the bottom part of his one single leg. We don't want them to be up here. So what we need to do in this case is hold down the shift key, this is very important, hold down the shift key and click this node and 
move it around. And you can see when I do that, when I hold the shift key, it's moving that single node all by itself. Okay. If I don't hold the shift key, this is what's going to happen. It's going to move the entire hierarchy, which we don't want. All right. So make sure that you hold the shift key when you're doing that. Um, so in this case, I'm going to hold the shift key. I'm going to drag this node down a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert. And what that's going to do is that's going to add a node midway between this bone node and the second one up here. All right. So I'm going to select insert. You can see that adds another one. We can hold shift and move that down as well. And then we can also insert another one. All right. So we inserted uh, two separate bone nodes. And then if I uh, zoom out and we do a little preview here, you can notice that uh, we'll have different results depending on the different bone sections that we manipulate. So it'll bend at the bottom there a little bit more. You can select this one and, you know, bend it at the top, put it in like kind of like an S if we can get it to, you know, work properly there. And uh, this one will also have a uh, slightly different result as well. Maybe we can try manipulating these two separately. There you go. Now we have kind of an S right there. All right. Not possible with the uh, two separate, uh, the single bones in the, uh, in the single leg there. All right. So let's stop the preview there. Now, if I wanted to take some of these bones out of here, uh, we talked about remove earlier. If I press remove at this point, it's going to remove the entire hierarchy and we only have the bone. So I'll control Z and undo that. So if I want to reduce, I'm just going to select this one. If I want to, you know, take out this bone, for example, this one shouldn't be here. So let's go ahead and reduce and it's going to remove that bone. And then we can take this one, hold shift and move this node a little bit further down, maybe to like the base right here or something. And then take this one, shift and click and drag it up to midway. So now it looks a bit more even more evenly spaced out. And if you go to reset here, uh, reset is basically just going to uh, reset everything. If I press it, you can see it will remove all the bones and images under the bones as well. So we don't want that, um, obviously, at this point. But this is what you can do if you want to reset just back to a single base bone. Um, not going to use that very often, but it's there anyways. Let's we'll go ahead and press no on that. All right, so that's basic. That's the basics of the bones, the both bone basics. All right, let's talk a little bit now about subdivision. So, the subdivision. I'm going to go ahead and select Show Wireframe here. Now, make sure that when you do this, you're on your bone root because if we go over to our layer manager right here, notice that only one of our layers has an actual image on it. Okay, so if we select any of these other bone layers, and we manipulate these values right here, like density, expand, alignment, we can move these wherever we want. It's not going to affect the mesh at all because it doesn't have an actual mesh um, on this particular bone layer. All right, so let's select layer uh, with the image on it right here. And what we're going to do is um, talk a little bit about, uh, you can modify the wireframe area. You can choose mask area or full image. And you can see that'll show the uh, full image mask. We don't need that in this case. Let's just go back to the mask right here because this is where we get the more accurate uh, modification. All right, so density is pretty simple. Um, higher density will increase the amount of uh, sections in your character's mesh right here, okay? So it'll make a, a denser mesh. And as a result, you'll have a bit more detail on your movement. Um, let's take a look first. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna preview. I'm gonna take my uh, character's arm here, for example. And you can move it and you can see there's a little bit of a jagged edge there on the bottom. If we take this one, this is probably a better example. This one's maybe a bit more jagged right here. You can kind of see some you know, jagged stuff a little bit. It's not too bad, but a little bit of jaggedness all along the edges like that. Uh, maybe right there, for example. Um, you can also do something with the uh, the base right here. You can see it right there is a little bit of jaggedness along the edge. And uh, right there especially. So let's go ahead and stop that preview. And let's increase our density. When we increase the density, oops, we need to make sure we select that layer first again. When we increase the density, you can see the result right here. We're going to have more uh, sections here on our mesh, and it's going to have a, it's going to create a more detailed uh, and smoother uh, twisting and, and morphing of our character's mesh. All right, and on, in addition to the density, you can also adjust the alignment. So alignment, if we pump that up, notice that it creates a lot more subsections right along the edge of the mesh. Okay, so alignment is good to create, you know, some more detail along the edges right there. Um, if we take alignment all the way down to zero, we're just gonna have a basic, you know, evenly spaced mesh. So alignment is normally recommended if you wanna have, you know, more even results along the edges right there. Let's go ahead and preview this right now, for example. Let's take that arm. You can see it's a bit smoother now. The, uh, the movements are the, uh, result along the edge is a bit smoother. If we can 
get this guy to move his arms straight. There we go. Um, so it may restrict the, the angle of movement a little bit, but you can see it's a lot more, a lot smoother along the edges here. All right. So you notice a lot, lot smoother than before because we have that more detailed mesh. Right, and then you can also expand or uh, reduce the size of your wireframe as well. Um, if I expand it, let's take our density uh, down a little bit. Let's take it back down to normal values here. Um, actually, let's keep it up at the very top here. Now, if I expand it, we're going to get a really uh, wide mesh like that that we really don't need. And if we preview that, um, you know, it's going to have a, a small result. Um, it's going to make it a little bit um, less detailed um, on certain parts. So let's take the arm, for example, here and, uh, you know, move that up. And it's, it's not as accurate as we'd like. You know, it's kind of stretching it in ways that we don't want. Um, generally, the recommended procedure, you can see a little bit of edginess right there, and uh, in addition to right there as well. Since we expanded the mesh, this one in particular, you can see the edges right there. Now, if we uh, reduce the mesh um, to like, a, you know, a size like this, oh, again, we need to make sure we're on the right layer there. Always forget that. So if we uh, reduce our mesh to the smallest size, make sure that there's no, none of your character's image is actually, you know, outside of the mesh. That's a very important uh, thing to check. Uh, so let's preview this and take a look at the results here. With the more detailed mesh, you can see it's a bit smoother. Again, um, when the mesh is closer to your character's body, you're going to get maybe a little bit of, a little bit less um, angle on your movement, but in general, you're going to have uh, better detail. So um, again, to increase or to lower the uh, mesh size, increase the density and alignment, you're going to have generally smoother results along the edge of your character's mesh. All right, and there's an option down here to affect all layers, which in this case doesn't really matter because, you know, um, we only have one layer with the actual mesh on it. So that's about it. That's about it for subdivision. Now, one final thing I'm going to show you here. Uh, to do that, we're going to just uh, exit out of here. And if we select Preview, this will allow us to, you know, preview certain parts of your character's body, just like this, just like we, we had in Edit Bone Mode. And if we go to Preview and we select Edit Pose, Edit Pose for this character won't really work. So let's bring in a character that uh, has another um, different bones on it, okay, on different layers. Uh, so I'm going to go back here. Uh, but to back to the stage here, and we're going to load in another actor. Let's go to uh, characters and G3 Freebone. Let's bring in this cool looking zombie character. All right, so there he is. He's going to eat that pumpkin head. And let's go over here to composer mode. So composer mode is what we were just in. And so we have this, you know, um, cool looking zombie here. We can take bones and kind of you know, move them around, but if we move them around, they're just going to snap back into place. Um, so say, for example, we wanted this zombie, his his arm to be in a different starting pose. Okay, so this is his default pose right here. If you wanted his arm to be in a different starting pose, then what we need to do is go to Edit Pose. Notice we're not going to preview this time. We're going to Edit Pose, and then what we would do is we would modify the position of this bone permanently. Okay, so say, for example, he's seeing high, or his, his arm can't go lower than this, uh, so we're putting it up there, and this other arm, you know, keep it over here, for example. Um, that'll be his starting pose. And then if we click Edit Pose again, that's going to be our first starting pose, our default pose for our character. So if we go back into Backstage, you can see it'll modify his starting pose. So now he looks a bit more threatening with his arms up like that. All right, so that's about it for uh, creating a simple free bone character. We talked about how to add in bones, how to modify them, manipulate them um, for your free bone characters. Uh, every character is going to be different, so you're going to have to experiment a little bit uh, with different shapes and sizes of free bone characters. There's a lot of freedom there, uh, hence the name. Uh, but that's everything for this tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching, and check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com, and I'll see you in the next video.